Adobe Systems is one of the largest software companies in the world, and it has been a phenomenal long-term investment. Yet we don't hear many investors talk about it. We think that's a mistake. So we're going to take Adobe Systems through our checklist and convince you to put this on your radar. My name is Brian Feraldi. And my name is Brian Stoffel. Thanks to StockCard.io for sponsoring today's video. For those that are unfamiliar, here is what Brian Stoffel's investing framework looks like. It's the anti-fragile framework. Here is the Feraldi quality score. This is the framework that I use to invest. Brian, for those that don't know, what does Adobe Systems do? So Adobe has three main platforms that it sells to its customers. And the first one is its most popular, brings in the most in sales, and that is Adobe's Creative Cloud. These are things like Photoshop, Illustrator, the things that put Adobe on the map. Creative professionals use them and they're trained on these tools when they're in school. The company believes that it will have an addressable market of about $41 billion by 2023. And even though it's the largest, it is still growing this segment at 22% per year. Yeah. When most people think of Adobe, they likely think of Photoshop, Illustrator, Adobe Premiere, et cetera. However, there's another side to Adobe that is unknown to most investors. And that is this company's Experience Cloud, which is a series of tools that are used by marketers, publishers, and advertisers to get the most out of their advertising dollar. It also provides a series of tools that help enhance e-commerce and provide work management, data and analytics, et cetera. This is a massive opportunity for Adobe. The company estimates that its total adjustable market in this category is $85 billion. And while this category has been growing very rapidly, it still only scratched the surface of what's possible here. Yeah, if Adobe is able to capitalize on that, it'll be a big deal. But let's cover the third platform, which is the Adobe Document Cloud. It is by far the smallest of the three. And in a lot of ways, it's similar to what DocuSign's business does. They do have a tool that helps you build applications, but e-signatures, vetted PDFs as a service, things like that, that is the bread and butter of this cloud. The company believes it has about a $21 billion addressable market by 2023. And even though it's going up against DocuSign, it is growing at about a 26% rate over the past three years. So that's a little bit about what Adobe does and its market opportunities. But let's get to your checklist. The mission statement of Adobe is to change the world through digital experiences. What do you think? Very simple. I think it's inspirational and it is optionable as we've just seen by going over the three different platforms. Yeah, I like it. Checks a lot of boxes for me. All right, let's talk about the moat. Do you think that Adobe has a network effect? I do. It's a weak one, but I do believe they have one. When they were getting started, they gave the PDF reader away for free. And what that did was is that it made a PDF the standard way of sending a document that wasn't, for instance, in Microsoft Word. This is a weaker moat than it was in the past. But the fact of the matter is, is the traction of everybody using the PDF helped get Adobe on the map. And like I said, it has become the standard in many schools, which in some ways is a similar network effect taking play. Yeah, PDF is a good example of that. If you want to send somebody a PDF, they have to have a way to read it and vice versa. And the more people that have access to that, the more useful that tool becomes. And Adobe is definitely the standard bearer there. Uh, like you, I think years ago, this was much stronger for them. I'm personally not going to give them any credit for the network effect today, but I understand why you think they do have one. All right, how about switching costs? This is the big one. This is the most important one. And it's because when you start using this product, you're not going to leave. The metric that we can look at to prove this is annual recurring revenue. And as you can see, year by year, quarter by quarter, it is growing fast. What that means is, is they're not only holding on to their customers and getting new customers, but they're getting their existing customers to spend more with the company. And it just stands to reason that this is so popular and taught in schools that the switching costs are so high. You built your whole career using these tools. If you make your income based on your skills in, in digital media, Adobe is the standard bearer for you. And it takes a long time to learn all the nuances of how to learn each individual tool. So like you, I think that high switching costs is this company's biggest advantage. All right. How about low cost advantage? I don't believe there's an advantage there. I don't think so either. How about intangibles? The brand. The brand in the industries that it plays in is very strong. You could argue that when it comes to e-signatures, DocuSign has an edge. But again, that's the smallest platform that they're dealing with. If you look at where they stand in the leadership quadrant in all these different areas that are analyzed, you can see that it is the de facto choice for so many different tools. Yeah, their brand is synonymous with digital creative tools. I think like you, it's very strong. Okay. How about counterpositioning? I don't think that that's a major advantage. 
advantage anymore. Yeah, in fact, I think other companies, SaaS companies, had counter positioning over Adobe a few years ago. However, in the last five years or so, the company has made the transition from a licensing model to a software as a service model. So like you, I don't think it's there. All right, let's talk optionality. What do you see? Well, if we go back to the beginning, we just had our PDF and our PDF reader, and then we got the Creative Cloud, Photoshop, Illustrator. They moved on to the Document Cloud, and then the Experience Cloud, which is an enormous opportunity, like you said. I think that they will use the cash that they have to move in other directions that help them fulfill their mission. Yeah, one important thing to note about Adobe is not all of its key products have been homegrown. Many of them were purchased, especially in recent years, to grow its, its, its presence in the Experience Cloud. But like you, I believe that this company does have the financial flexibility and optionality built into it to enter any category that it wants to. All right, let's talk financials. As of June 4th, 2021, which is the most recent quarter, this company had almost $6 billion in cash, $4 billion in debt, and almost $7 billion in free cash flow. I don't love the amount of debt relative to the cash that's on the balance sheet, but it almost doesn't matter because they're bringing in so much free cash flow. Now, one of the reasons that it looks like that is because they're buying back a lot of their stock, which is great for shareholders. But I believe that they've got a certain level of flexibility because they could turn those buybacks off and switch their balance sheet to be enormously cash positive if they wanted. This company generates so much free cash flow coming in. Like you, I'm not thrilled about the debt, but I'm not worried about it at all. All right, concentration risk. None to worry about. Great to see. All right, Glassdoor. These are stellar scores, 4.4 stars and a 98% approval rating for CEO. Yeah, CEO Narayan, he is one of the highest rated CEOs in all of technology. I think he is dramatically undervalued. His employees really seem to love him. The returns that he has delivered for his shareholders have been absolutely incredible. I think Adobe has one of the best cultures in tech. All right, founder. So the founder is still involved for as old of a company as this is. Dr. John Warnock used to be the chairman and CEO of the company. He's no longer in the C-suite and he's no longer the chairman, but he is on the board of directors. Love to see that. That's actually really surprising given how long this company has been around for. All right, ownership. So the ownership levels are less than desired for my framework. As of March, 2021, Warnock and Narayan owned less than 1% of shares outstanding. All insiders combined less than 1%. That said, on a nominal value, the insider holdings was still worth over $700 million. This is not uncommon for a company as old in software speak as old as Adobe is. Yeah, this is one of those cases when the percentages do not look impressive, but insiders still have 730 million reasons to want to see this stock go higher. All right, before we get to the final scores, I wanted to give a shout out to our channel members, especially to Matthew Jones and Mark Holtz. Thank you so much for joining. We really appreciate it. If that interests you, you get access to badges, to emojis. We do member-only polling on what stock we should do next on our Stock From Scratch series. If that interests you, just click the join button. All right, Brian, let's take it to your frame. What'd you get permission? Full credit. I thought it checked all three boxes. Great. Moat. So I'm going to give them half credit for the network effect. Maybe that's generous. Full credit for the switching costs and full one point for the brand, bringing it to four points. Awesome. Optionality? I give them two points. Maybe that's or two and a half points. Maybe that's a little bit generous, but I just see that they could move on to different platforms. And although it's still software as a service, there are different industries that they're going into. Okay. Financials? I give them uh, full credit because they have so much free cash flow. The debt doesn't bother me. Okay. Concentration? Nothing to worry about there. Glass door? Give them full credit. Great scores. Founder? Still involved. Dr. Warnock's on the board and ownership. And on there, I take a point off. Again, you, when you take certain things into consideration, maybe I'm being a little unjust, but for consistency's sake, it's under 4%. I think you are a little overly generous on the network effect, so that all counters itself out. There but we you go. add that together and we get a 10 and a half. That's a really good score. It's a great score. Clearly robust slash anti-fragile company. All right, let's take it through my framework real fast. So financially, this company is unbelievably strong. I gave them a 16 out of 17. On the moat, I also think this company has a wide and enduring moat. So I gave them a 20 out of 20. For potential, I only gave them an 11 out of 18. One of the reasons is this company has experienced so much operating leverage in recent years. I don't think they have a lot of operating leverage ahead of them. For that point, I took a couple points off. For customers, very high quality relationship with their customers. I gave them a nine out of 10. The revenue quality here is stellar. It's recession proof and it's recurring. Love to see that. The culture is very, very strong. I gave them a 12 out of 14. The stock checks so many boxes for me. Not only has the stock thumped the market and they regularly beat their, their 
earning estimates, they use their cash hoard to buy back stock. And for the gauntlet, I subtracted one point because this company gets a lot of its revenue overseas that can do some wonky things with currency. But you add all that together. And for me, this got an 86, which is well into my high quality business category. That is a very high score in your framework. For mine, it wasn't quite as impressive, but it was still a 10 and a half, which is a very strong score. I think for both of us, there's no doubt that Indoli is a highly investable idea. Now, to hold ourselves accountable, we're going to head on over to stockcard.io, and we are going to enter that into Brian's portfolio and my portfolio. So we're going to go down, and we're going to add a new order. The ticker symbol here is ADBE for Adobe. We are recording this on Monday, September 20th, so that's when we're going to be doing the buy. This is a $654 stock. So we're going to be buying two shares each. And for you, Brian, we've got an anti-fragile score of 10.5. And we're going to submit that. Then we're going to head over to my portfolio, uh, which is the Brian for all the quality checklist score. And we are going to do the exact same thing. The ticker symbol is ADBE. We're going to do a buy decision. We're going to do it on today's date. We're going to buy two shares and a score of 87. Thank you, Stock Card, for sponsoring today's video. If you want to see our portfolios in action, you can head over to stockcard.io and use the code ANTIFRAGILE to get 10% off the premium subscription. Brian, Adobe is a company that checks so many boxes for me. It's a stock that I have personally owned for years, and I can easily see myself owning for many more to come. Yes, and though I don't own it myself, it has more to do with the fact that you can't own every single great stock that there is in the market. I hope that this puts it on the radar of investors. That's our goal. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this. What stock do you want us to research next? Let us know in the comment section below. My name is Brian Feraldi and my mission is to spread financial wellness. And my name is Brian Stoffel. My mission is to publish the rules of finance for anyone to see. Brian's out.